and welcome to a millinery fabrics video. My name is Ilona, I am a milliner based in London and today I am going to be looking at the differences between silk organza and cotton organdy. I will also touch on the properties of these fabrics and talk about their various applications in a millinery context. I am definitely not an expert when it comes to the minute detail of fabric production, but I have done my best to conduct research responsibly and from reputable sources. I will link to those sources and other resources for further reading in the description box below. If you think I've missed something important, please be kind and let me know in the comments. So get your pens and paper at the ready and let's get started. Firstly, let's talk about the silk organza. Silk is the fiber and organza is the type of weave. These are the two ingredients that make up this fabric. Silk can come in many different weaves and organza can come in many different fibres. Personally, when it comes to my millinery, I think it's really important to use natural fibres. So I will always choose silk over polyester. I mention this because organza is more commonly and cheaply available as a polyester. I know I'm supposed to be talking about silk organza, but I really wanted to show you how a polyester organza looks compared to a silk. See the sheen on this fabric right here? That overly shiny look marks this out to be a polyester. And for comparison, here's the silk organza. It has a more delicate, wispy look and is actually stronger than the polyester fabric when dry. However, be careful when you get the silk fibers wet as they become weaker and can tear like paper. If you are in a fabric shop and you aren't sure if something is natural silk or plastic polyester, ask for some fabric samples, take them home and perform a burn test. Please be really careful when you do this, have a container of water next to you for safety and obviously flames are hot so don't burn yourself. For the burn test, I am going to use a lighter and bring it close to the edge of the fabric. Because the polyester is a plastic, it will not burn but melt and leave beads of burnt plastic on its edge. The silk however is a natural protein fibre, more on this in a second. And because it is natural, it will catch the flame and burn slowly. The residue from the flame will be like ash and smell like burnt hair. Now that the polyester is out of the way, let's have a look at silk. What is it and how is it made? One of the best things about silk is that it is actually pretty hardy. It has a reputation for being delicate and that you have to be gentle with it, but actually it's one of the strongest natural fibres. To add to that, it can also withstand quite high heat and it's this combination of strength and heat tolerance that makes it perfect for making millinery flowers. However, I think I've already said this, but no harm in repeating myself. Be careful with wet silk. Its strength decreases when it's wet. As I've already mentioned, silk is a natural protein fiber. A protein fiber just means that it comes from an animal protein source. Wool is a common example of a protein fiber. Wool comes from sheep and silk comes from the cocoons of the Bombyx mori silkworm. These worms are fed mulberry tree leaves and after about a month they start to spin themselves a cocoon. The cocoons are made using their saliva which solidifies when it meets the air. This filament gets woven round and around until the cocoon is fully formed. Then the cocoon gets boiled up and the fibres are unravelled. These long fibres are then woven into the desired weave and the silk fabric is formed. This process isn't considered particularly humane. The silkworm has to die and is not allowed to reach metamorphosis and turn into a moth. However, just like many fabrics and clothes, you can get more ethically and sustainably produced silk, although it is rather hard to find if you are buying on a small scale of just one metre at a time. These ethical and sustainable silks are known as preferred silks. Their key characteristics are that they are organic, fair trade and more humanely produced. The humanely produced type of silk is often referred to as peace silk. It's important to note that ethical and humane silk production isn't necessarily better than normal silk production. In fact, some sources say that in the long term it actually kills off more of the silkworms than the standard way. See source number 3 in the description box below for more information on this. Ok, so now we know what silk is and how it's made, let's talk a little bit about its countries of origin. Silk has a long history of being produced in the eastern regions of the world. Historically speaking, it would travel from the east to Europe via the Silk Road. This is a historic trading route linking China to the west. Today, more than 60 countries in the world produce silk, but the majority of production by volume still happens in China, not so closely followed by India and Uzbekistan. 
That silk out of the way, now let's look at what the organza actually is. Organza is known as a plain weave fabric, which means that it forms a checkerboard pattern as it is woven. This type of weave is strong, long lasting and resists stretch on the straight grain. It is however very stretchy on the bias. It also has no right or wrong side, that is unless it has a pattern printed on it post weave. A key characteristic of an organza weave is that it is sheer and this makes it perfect for making light and fluffy flowers such as roses. I've got a video on how to do this right up here. Another thing I like to do with organza is to use it as an overlay fabric. I really like how it can elevate the look of a simple cotton by adding a little extra dimension. And now let's move on to cotton organdy. Cotton is the fibre and organdy is the finish. I won't go into too much detail about cotton and its production, but essentially it's the fluff of a plant which makes it a natural fibre. The fibres are washed and spun into a yarn and then can be woven into the desired weave. Speaking of the weave, what exactly is organdy and how is it different to organza? Well, the weave is practically the same. Organdy is a plain weave fabric, just like the organza. But what makes it different is the fabric finish. Organdy goes through a chemical process which gives it its characteristic crisp paper-like texture. This chemical process involves an acid and lye treatment with heat application. The acid provides the crispness. Usually sulfuric acid is used, although there are plenty of other acids that can also be added depending on the desired stiffness. The heat then sets this stiffness and the lye, which is an alkali, is used at the end to neutralise the acid and make sure that the cloth is safe. In my Jacquard acid dye video, I mentioned that when I was dyeing my organza fabric, it took on a crisp paper texture. And I think this happened because I accidentally added in too much citric acid in combination with boiling the dye bath for too long. So I think I inadvertently ended up with a silk organza organdy. Organdy can come in a variety of crispness levels depending on the combination of acids and heats. So if you are looking for a very specific texture, it's best to get lots of different fabric samples. Another way to achieve an organdy finish is to use starch, but this isn't as durable as the acid treatment as it will wash out if the fabric is laundered. So now you know all about cotton organdy. What can you do with it? Well, as always, there's flower making. I use it to make beautiful crinkle leaf poppies. And as I've mentioned, organdy has a paper-like feel, so you could use it as if it was paper to make some origami. Outside of a millinery context, organdy is used for light yet voluminous dresses. So perhaps this can somehow be translated into hats. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. If there are any other millinery topics you'd like me to explore, let me know in the comments below. And if you've enjoyed today's video, please like and subscribe. This really helps me grow and reach a larger audience. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Bye. Outside of a millinery context, cat. Cat is walking. Shall I redo that bit? I got this. No, I don't got this. I need you. It's the last bit. It is the last bit.